Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about a dual diagnosis. Every child is different, but very rarely is a child just diagnosed with uh, being on the autistic spectrum. So some children are diagnosed with having OCD, anxiety, Tourette's, ADHD, and PDA. They're the sort of main ones that come with the autistic diagnosis. Now this might sound all very scary and it's a bit like, what, what are all these things? And should I be worried? And please do not panic. All these different labels, they're just words, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about it and what it means. So if you get a diagnosis and they say, oh, they also have OCD, what it means and how you can perhaps help support your child. So Dylan is on the autistic spectrum. He also has severe anxiety, which came at about, probably we started really noticing at about 10, 11. Anxiety is a big one. This is really, really hard. And again, it's about having everything for me, for, for Dylan, having everything mapped out, taking deep breaths, getting into the meditation. Anxiety is all in the head. Once it's in the head, it then manifests itself in the body. And I know when I get anxious, and I'm an anxious person as well, my shoulders go up, I get that knot in my stomach, things like breathing, kind of lowering my shoulders down, going for a walk, going for a swim, all help me. But I'm an adult, I know how to do that. How do you help your child? Essential oils are really good, and I rub Dylan's feet for younger children, putting on calming music, you know, kind of doing that to their hand, getting them back into their body again. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now this is a word that's kind of like thrown around a little bit, like I sometimes say, oh, I have OCD because I like a tidy house or I like my wardrobe to look a certain way. But obsessive compulsive disorder is a condition that can be very debilitating to a lot of adults and it can literally take over people's lives. Now, before you start panicking, there are things that can be done. Like with autism, the earlier you sort of recognize it, the more you can do about it. Further on in the season, we're gonna to speak to a friend of mine called Dan, who gives some great advice, what he did with his son. Um, but basically it's to change up routines. If you notice your child being obsessive about something, you know, it can be a routine, it can be your toys, it could be um, things being a certain way, it could be doing things a certain way. Now, how do you break that pattern? So Dylan would have to do things a certain way and he got into a habit of going, three times and he, if he did it twice he had to go back and do it again he had to do it in the same way every time now ocd is usually heightened in times of anxiety so anxiety and ocd tend to go together for dylan i would get his hand after one go and he wouldn't like it because he felt like he had to do it and then i would say to him now he's older say well look if you don't do it three times what do you think is going to happen and he would say something bad's going to happen and i would do it once and i'd say see nothing bad happened and after a few kind of meltdowns and uh, crying episodes, he kind of realized that actually nothing bad is gonna happen if I do that. But you have to kind of break the cycle. And this is what I do and I suggest for younger children, is sort of breaking up the cycle or, you know, if you leave the house at 8.30 every morning, perhaps leave at 8.35 one morning, because life isn't always gonna go smoothly and life is always gonna throw curveballs. So the more you can break up routines, the more your child's gonna get used to and at first you're thinking, why am I doing this? I'm upsetting my child. Just let them do what they're happy with. But that child is going to become a teenager. That teenager is going to become an adult. And if you have an adult with severe OCD, they can control your life because they are so controlled in their own life and you don't want that. So the earlier you can sort of break that routine, the better. You can ask your GP or your pediatrician about OCD. And if you want to get your child a diagnosis, um, go ahead and do that. Tourette's, I think maybe you and I would know it as um, saying things uncontrollably, but it's saying things uncontrollably and your body acting in a way that you can't control. You usually get a diagnosis around 10, 11, 12, and it's sort of easier to diagnose at that age. Before that, it can present itself in like a tick or a stim, but when they become sort of teenagers, it becomes more apparent that it's actually Tourette's. So I'm not an expert on Tourette's as Dylan doesn't have Tourette's, but I know it is a very, it's a very common uh, dual diagnosis with autism. Again, don't worry. There's nothing to be embarrassed about or ashamed 
ashamed about if you're if you're autistic and you are worried about Tourette's please do talk to your doctor and they can lead you in the right way there's also some fantastic YouTube videos dedicated to Tourette's that you can look up as well I will link some below for you PDA so this is something that I've had to learn about in a quick crash course in the past couple of uh, months which is pathological demand avoidance and I think I spoke about it a little bit in my um, in my video when we came back and basically it's any demands being put on them they avoid basically and you might say oh all kids do that it's quite severe in terms of you know in terms of you need to go to the toilet no I won't go to the toilet I didn't realize that Dylan had PDA I had to learn the hard way because I'd say to him, do you need to eat your food? And he'd say, no. And I'm like, no, you need to eat your food. And he'd say, no. So the more I pushed, the more he pushed back at me, the more he got angry and the harder it was to get back from that. If you think your child has PDA, the best way to get around that is literally just to rephrase things and to make it very child led. So you can say, do you want to eat dinner tonight at six o'clock or 6.30? And even that small little change makes them feel they're more in control even though you're the one in the driving seat, you're basically saying, do you want to go left or right? And you're giving them that choice. By giving them that choice, you're taking away the demand. So they feel they're in control and they can go, okay. So for Dylan, I was like, that's no problem. So which time do you want to eat then? Six or 6.30? And even though it was half an hour difference, he felt in control, he felt calmer. And we, we managed to go ahead that way. Um, again, with the food, I mean, there's obviously certain things in life. I am the parent. I am the one who knows better, quite frankly, sometimes, sometimes. And I had to say to him, no, it's three meals a day. And with that three meals a day, you can have them whenever you want. And at first he was like, no, nope, I'm going to have two meals a day. And I was like, nope, three meals a day and end of conversation. I just walked away and then I come back in again and I would literally just keep this up until his body got used to eating again. Um, as I mentioned before, he had a, um, an eating disorder based on control. Um, it wasn't anorexia nervosa, he got um, looked into for that. It was literally, he felt out of control, he felt anxious, what could he control? That was what went into his mouth. And I couldn't do anything about it, which was pretty heartbreaking as a mother. But the way we got around that was to lower his anxiety around food, to help him eat in his room away from other people. So if your child is having difficulty eating, have a look at the setting, have a look at the lighting, have a look who's there. Maybe they want to eat on their own. Whatever it is, let them do it. You'll slowly get them back, but sometimes it feels like you're going five steps back to go two steps forward, but you will get to your end goal. So give yourself time, give your child time and work on it together. You know, if your child is verbal, ask them what would they prefer? You know, what do they want for dinner? Would they want this or this? And it could be, do you want mashed potatoes or roast potatoes? At least you're giving them an option. So hopefully that should help. This is for our water school. <laughs> so it's Mufti day here. Come sit down, dinosaur. And do you want to tell people what ADHD is? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity so, Disorder. So, it's where you get really fiddly and it's hard to concentrate. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't sit down, can you? Yes. That's why in school I was almost standing up the whole time. Do you really stand up in school all day? I just do this on the table and I just... Can you tell everybody what you use in school to help you with your ADHD? Like, what I helps you? I usually find bits of blue tack near tables and then I play with them. So he gets blue tack and he just plays with it and it stretches under the table, which is a good one. He likes doing that. You, are, you have a lot of friends who are autistic, don't you? Yeah. So Luca, because all he's ever known is having a brother on the spectrum, Luca feels very comfortable with other children who are on the spectrum. And there's a few in your class. How many are in your class? Um, we got... Two? So he has ADHD and autism and he finds it hard to struggle. So that, that's the most common dual diagnosis would be the ADHD and autism together. That's the most common one. Luca doesn't stim as such, but he finds it very hard to sit still. And also he's very sensory. So sensory processing disorder is basically a way you can find lights too bright, you can find sounds too bright, clothing. Oh, you have an issue with clothing, don't you? 
He does not like certain clothing I don't at like all. Fancy clothes, they're uncomfortable. <laughs> he finds fancy clothes uncomfortable. By fancy clothes, he means a school uniform. He means jeans. Jeans are not fancy. He just wants to wear like tracksuits all the time. But that again is sensory processing disorder. And I know that if Luca gets too hot or too cold, he loses concentration. He doesn't like food touching either. But again, I don't know, is that because he's following his big brother or is that something you don't like? What do you reckon? Do you think it's because you've always seen Dylan do that? No, it's because I have seen Dylan do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I see foods that don't look that nice, I don't want to eat it. Yeah, he, he has a aversion to a lot of foods. Is it, is it going to be a video? Yeah. Okay. Do I get a microphone for you? When your child's diagnosed with autism, you have all those younger things to contend with in terms of you know, what's the life gonna be like? How is it gonna be? And I think the journey with autism is ever changing. Like where we were when he was two is nowhere near where we are now. But every stage has its challenges. Just like any child going through teenagehood, it's difficult, right? You've got hormones and I'm trying to explain that to Dylan at the moment. A lot of people say to me, at what level is Dylan diagnosed? I don't like answering that question because it changes. It really does. It's different here in the UK than it is in America. So, but he was diagnosed as quite severely autistic. He might never talk, um, walk, make friends. And of course now he's done all of those things. So if you're looking at the Richter scale, you might go, well, he's, he can do this, but he can't do this. And then you look at, you know, toileting. He couldn't really help himself in the toilet up until last year. So again, that would be classed as quite severe. So it, the, the whole range of spectrum goes like this. Um, so I don't really like answering those questions of where he was because it changes all the time. Are you right, cutie? Should we talk about you? Mm -hmm. About how beautiful you are. What does mummy do with you? Mummy always says I'm beautiful and she kisses me a load of times. She... I do. We have special times together, don't we? I want tickles. Not right now. Please may tickle me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he likes sensory touch as well. So I hope that's not too much information for you. Please do not freak out. I just wanted you guys to be aware that sometimes when you get your autism diagnosis, you also get another diagnosis because it likes to come together with something else. But it's all gonna be okay, as always. You have got this, your child has got it. And you know, like I said, the spectrum moves and some days you have bad days, some days you've got good days. Isn't that right? Yeah. And on the bad days, we think what we're grateful for. We give each other lots of hug and time and love and we just make sure that we look after each other and you guys look after yourselves and yeah if you guys have any questions or you want to comment below please do subscribe to us ring that bell subscribe and press that like button is it a like button now yes it's a like button. oh man i'm so ancient i thought it was a bell the bell it's notifications and then the notifications, like every time you make a video and they're like playing a game or something, oh, yeah. it'll make a notification saying Tara Lennison's made a new video. Okay, so what do we want what do we want our subscribers to do? You know what that is now, and subscribing, you know what that is, and then yeah. the like button. It's just a like button is just they like the video. Oh a like. I thought you said like a light. <laughs> like so a, a bing, a light bulb. If anybody would like to leave a comment for Luca. Please just put Luca in the beginning and he'll Sometimes read it. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only reason that everyone likes the channel. <laughs> Guys. I'm the actor. Everyone loves me. Wow. Uh, you're humble too. Yes. Do you know what humble means? No. Yeah. <laughs> All of you subscribers are the best. You're the only reason why we keep doing this. Yes, that's right. We love you. We love you. And we'll see you very soon. Yes, goodbye now. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.